Does God exist, and how can we know? That's a new question for this channel, never done that before. So how do we know truly that God 100% exists? Let's see, what do I think you're gonna say here? Um, well it's only five minutes long, so there's probably only gonna be a couple arguments in here, maybe three or four, unless it's a particularly bad gish gallop. But this is one of those hipster channels that likes to have the lo-fi hip-hop in the background. If anything, he's probably gonna waste time getting to a point. He's probably not gonna be rapid-firing them out. And it probably also means that whatever he's gonna say here is gonna be the most generic, low-tier arguments you can think of. So what's it gonna be? Let's say the fine-tuning argument, that's a good bet. And that'll probably chew up at least two or three minutes. Does that even leave time for anything else? Maybe just, you know, I feel like it. I just know. God talks to me. Uh, I have a relationship with Jesus and um, I know it in my heart. And then maybe some kind of little sermon at the end about how you can too. I might have missed something, but I'm pretty sure at least those things are going to be there. Let's see how it goes. Well, if that's the very question you're asking yourself today, then stay tuned because that answer is coming up. I really hope that boring background music isn't going to give me copyright problems. Welcome back, it's Messenger, and I decided to make this video because millions around the world are asking this very question. To believe in the living God and they want clarification. Well stop questioning because this video is going to answer your question. If you do learn in this video then hit the like button and subscribe because it lets me know that you got the information and you're going to put it in your daily life. So what I'm getting out of that is you're some kind of an expert on this topic, right? You're explicitly telling people that they should be learning from this video, they should be learning lessons from you that won't just be answers to trivial questions but will actually be things that they should implement into their daily lives. So these are pretty important things that you're going to be be teaching. So if you think you're the guy who should be teaching them these things that should affect every day of their lives, and not just basic things like, you know, drink lots of water, get a good night's sleep, but facts and arguments that establish the existence of the supernatural, of God, presumably about the nature of the universe and its origins, things that really should take a fair amount of expertise, if you think you're the expert here that they should be learning from, that knows more than most people on this issue, you must really know this stuff inside and out. So to start off, why is this the most asked question? Because because they don't see proof. Once they see proof, they'll be like, okay, I witnessed it, I believe them now. All right, right off the bat here, I actually wanna give you a lot of credit. There are way too many Christians out there who, when they're trying to answer the question of why people don't believe in God, why they ask you for reasons to believe in your God, they'll come up with things like people are just suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. You know, they already believe it and they're just denying it. Or they just don't wanna believe because they wanna serve Satan. Or after you tell them something like, I don't believe in God, but I'll believe it if I see good evidence of it. They'll kind of take on this attitude like, oh, that's not true. You don't want to believe it. You're just going to deny any evidence I present to you. But no, the characterization you just gave is perfectly fair. The reason people don't believe in God and the reason people ask you for evidence of it is that they don't think your evidence and your arguments do a good job of establishing its existence, at least not the ones they've heard. And for a lot of people, definitely myself included, if there was extremely good evidence of it, evidence that clearly and obviously pointed to that one explanation and excluded others, then I would believe it, just like I believe all kinds of weird, unintuitive things that happen to be supported by evidence. And by believe, just just for anyone who's unclear on what I mean when I say this, I mean accept as likely true pending any disconfirming evidence. Or superior explanations for the same evidence. Well actually proof is all around us. The world we live in. The air we breathe. Okay, there we go. Where is this going? Is it going to be as simple as, look at the world, look at the air, therefore God, because? Or is there at least going to be an attempt at obfuscating that that's what's happening? Scientists have a theory called the Big Bang Theory that everything that we live in today was created by itself. No, that is not what the Big Bang Theory says. The Big Bang Theory just says that the universe expanded and currently is expanding from a much denser state. It in no way discusses the universe creating itself or anything else creating the universe. Obviously, there are theoretical scientists who are very, very interested in figuring out how such a thing can happen. People have different ideas about what may have preceded the universe, if such a thing makes any sense, and how this whole thing works. None of which, by the way, boil down to the universe was created by itself. But more importantly, none of which is firmly established. Certainly not experimentally. You know, as smart as these cosmologists and physicists and all these people are, and they really are, I personally am not inclined to take any particular opinion, even if it's the prevailing one, as conclusively true. 
or even likely the correct explanation, right? The expansion part of things is observationally established. Everything beyond that is interesting ideas backed up with a whole bunch of math that I personally don't understand, which may be correct, may not be correct, and may be so far beyond current scientific understanding that it's nowhere close. I can't see how these kind of ideas could possibly be considered anything like as solid as ones with far more experimental and observational backing, like the theory of evolution, things like that. Maybe there are some people out there who would like to disagree with me on that, but that's my take on it. And it's why when I hear Christians saying things like, science says that the universe sprang out of nothing, or the universe created itself, or something else like that, as if they think science works like a religion, and there's just the answer that is proclaimed by the prophets, even on an issue as spectacularly difficult as this one, which I would guess is probably a far more difficult problem than even, say, the origin of life. When I hear Christians starting an argument on this premise, I immediately start to tune out, because it's already based on a faulty premise that there are basically two competing possibilities, the God possibility and the science possibility. You know, the one thing that science says definitely happened and caused the universe. That everything that we live in today was created by itself. That automatically it had the brains to create everything and have all the resources we need today. Oh. And here I was thinking the created itself statement was bad. Seriously, what are you even talking about? I'm getting confused here. See, I'm not sure what theory you're even thinking of that says the universe had the brains to create resources. You're not talking about people here, right? You're talking about the universe, the scientific understanding of the origin of the universe. And you're bringing up that it had the brains to make itself how it wanted to be. Look, I know you think you're some kind of a teacher, but in this case, you're talking shit about what other people think, and your summary of what they think is the biggest load of nonsense I've ever heard. What you just said bears no relation to the Big Bang Theory or any other, at least mainstream, scientific theory about the origin of the universe as we know it today. The least you could have done if you were going to speak like some kind of teacher on this topic, trying to get people to implement your teachings in their daily lives, is to understand to even the slightest degree what it is that the people you're talking about think. Because already, based on how amazingly wrong everything you've just said was, I'm getting the impression that nobody should be learning from you, and you should know better than to tell them that they should. Now, of course, just because you should know better doesn't mean you do, and I suspect that that's the whole problem. It had the brains to give us oxygen, but the right amount, because if it was a little up, it would not do us any good. If it was a little below, it would not do us any good either. It was just a perfect amount of everything. Everything was in perfect order. Wait, hold on. So your assertion then is that the human body was pre-designed, the oxygen requirements of human beings was pre-decided, and then oxygen was put into the atmosphere to match that design. And it never occurred to you to wonder if perhaps the amount of oxygen that a human needs to breathe is a consequence of the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere in the first place. That if we needed drastically more oxygen or drastically less oxygen than is present, we wouldn't be here to wonder how we're alive despite that. That some other organism that's better adapted to that amount of oxygen would be here instead. Right, see, you're trying to make an argument to people who don't believe in God why they should believe in God. And you're starting off with the assumption that the species on Earth were pre-designed, and after that, the Earth itself was designed to accommodate the creatures. And you're just saying this as if it's obviously true. Well, if that's the assumption you're starting with, no wonder you get confused. No wonder you think the scientists think the universe had to have a brain to plan everything out. Because you've got the order of events completely fucked up. First, humans are dreamt up by something. God, the universe, then the Earth is made, and then humans are plopped onto it. That's not the prevailing scientific opinion, that's creationism. That's your religion. You know, the thing that I don't even believe in the fundamental basis of, which is the God. Did you honestly think that when you're trying to convince someone to believe in God, they're going to start out being a young earth creationist? Agreeing with you on your idea of human origins and the universe's origins, but just not the God part? Seriously, does that really seem that common to you? Waves, they cannot go and flood the entire world. Notice how it goes all the way up and then it goes back down. Yeah, tides go in, tides go out. You can't explain that. <laughs> Anyway, again, the reason that land animals are able to survive is because the land is not flooded by water all the time. It's not that the land is not flooded by water so that the land animals can survive. It's that the land animals can survive because the land is not flooded by water. Again, you're trying to convince atheists of the existence of God by using a religious idea about why things are the way they are. You're not just assuming, but you're also assuming that everyone else assumes that every aspect of the universe is as it is so that we will exist. 
that the Earth was designed to support us. Not that we and other animals are able to exist because we're well enough adapted to the conditions here. It's not that the water conformed to the shape of the glass, it's that the glass was made to the pre-existing shape of the water. It's really strange, do you honestly not understand that other people don't necessarily just arbitrarily assume that the causation of things goes the way you think it does? You seem not to. I feel like if I told you this, you'd be surprised. You'd say, wait a second, are you saying you don't think dry land was created to support humanity? Do you even realize that your argument for God's existence hinges on massive assumptions that some people, but definitely not everyone outside your religion holds, and which are the furthest thing from self-evident? Gallons and gallons and gallons and so much water, but it's just there, and it's not going all the way over here. Well, you know, I spent my life not believing in God, but I never thought about the fact that there's gallons of water in the ocean, and they're not all over me. How could I have been so wrong? Of how those huge, huge, big waves are only in the distance, and when it comes to land, they slow down. Waves are big and fast in the middle of the ocean, and then when they get closer to shore, they're smaller and slower. Therefore, God, okay, same answer, I guess, as the last two. It's a weird one anyway, though. Like, what if they didn't slow down? What if they kept going fast, and they kept being big until the land got too high out of the water, and they obviously can't just climb up it, and so they crashed against that? Like, would that mean the non-existence of human life? I think we'd just live further from the shore. No beach houses, no sub-sea level cities. Oh well. I don't even understand what you think you're accomplishing with this one. Of how there's birds everywhere and they never beg for food. You've got to be kidding me. Have you ever gone to a McDonald's or a picnic on the coast? Those seagulls not only beg for food, they'll damn near fight you for it. And each other. And that doesn't just go for seagulls. There's constant competition among birds for food. And pretty much every other kind of animal. Between that and the competition for sex, you've pretty much described the entire natural world. Haven't you ever watched a nature documentary? That there's always somehow food for every single millionth bird in the entire world. You have got to be joking. So animals never starve, is what you're saying. There's always food for every animal. And you actually believe this. How is that even possible? Now that's no accident. I agree, it's no accident because it's not even a real thing. Okay, I expected the fine-tuning argument. Pretty much if there's gonna be a short video about proving God exists, nine times out of ten it's gonna go to fine-tuning. And I was right, but I did not predict the animals never starve therefore God argument. I can't say I saw that one coming, so you know? At the very least you can say that you managed to surprise me. Not only was I not expecting it, but I've never heard it before either. I think I'd remember if I had. God did that. He provides for them. Unfucking believable <laughs> <laughs> what do you even say to something like that? Well, I guess what I'll do is maybe try to make a better version of the argument, which would be every kind of animal on Earth wants to eat something that's on Earth and not just some mystery alien substance that's never existed on the planet. And therefore, animals never starve as a result of being designed for some other planet and then being plopped onto Earth, which has no trace of any kind of food they're even capable of eating. Therefore design somehow, therefore God. Which is of course the same stupid assumption of backwards causation as before. But it's better than animals never starve. You're welcome. If there was a minor change in anything, in the number of bugs, animals, oxygen, uh, water, anything, it would make a huge difference in the world today. And just to be clear, you think this has never happened? You think the people that you're talking to, trying to convince them of the existence of God, are just assuming for no reason that the number of animals, the number of bugs, and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere have always been exactly the same. Despite the fact that the past century has seen a dramatic change in the number of animals and the number of bugs, and the strong evidence for multiple mass extinctions in the world's history, and the strong evidence that oxygen levels have varied significantly in the more distant past. But somehow it is in perfect order, and that somehow is God. You know, jokes aside, this is really easy to make fun of, because it's hard to understand how someone could possibly believe what's coming out of this guy's mouth right now. But that's exactly the point. I have no reason to think he's not earnest about this. I'm pretty sure that he thinks he's putting forward a good argument for something here. The level of ignorance required to do this is astonishing. And now, of course, this is a young guy, right? I don't expect him to be an expert on anything, even though he's positioning himself as one. But the quality of the arguments here is so bad that I can 
consider it a pretty damning reflection on somebody. Whether that's his teachers, his parents, his pastor, all of them put together. What is this? How does someone at this age still have this level of abject ignorance? The planet is in perfect order, every animal on it has the perfect amount of food and never has to beg? Is this a product of severe sheltering or what? I don't even know how it happens. Now, proof is all around us, but it's the matter of wanting to see the proof. Yeah, I want to see it, but I also see proof that animals starve and that the number of bugs and animals changes over time. So it's kind of hard for me to take what you're saying as proof. Do you have anything of value? It's not just about showing people what you think is proof. It's about that so-called proof actually being of some kind of quality. Rather than being like, okay, show me this God you speak of and change my mind. I don't expect you to show me the God. I expect you to show me the effects of the God and establish to me that it explains those effects, or back up one step, that those effects are actually real to start with. And then that the God explains those effects. And then why it explains those effects better than any other explanation. Now, as far as how you do this, whatever, DM me and we'll get into a conversation about it. Not really the point. The point is, if someone is being reasonable with you, they're not asking you to literally show them God. What they're asking you to do is show them the effects of God and demonstrate to them in some compelling way that they're most likely caused by God, not by something else, right? I don't know where Christians get this idea that people demand to see God, you know, that they won't believe anything that their eyes can't see and their ears can't hear and this crap. There are plenty of things scientifically established that plenty of atheists believe in, which are not detectable through any human sense, certainly not unaided. And there are plenty of things that aren't directly observable at all, even with a device, right? Black holes, for example, are really more of an inference. You can see some things they do. You can see gravitational lensing, for example, but you can't see a black hole, by definition. But that doesn't mean that I deny their existence. The effect is pretty clear. And the black hole hypothesis explains it far better than any other idea that we have right now. Now, we don't change minds, we change hearts. Big difference. That is a big difference. If that's the case, I don't know why you tried to make an intellectual argument, because you made yourself look really, really stupid. Stick with the hearts changing. Just tell people, pray to Jesus, please, please, try praying to God, please. It'll really work, trust me, please, try it, please. Feels, feels, feels. It's honestly a better argument than what you had before. I know it's not saying much, but it's true. You have to have the want to see him. Not just looking for evidence, but realizing that there's more to life than this. <sighs> that there's more to life than drinking water? Blasphemy. Real Christians feel God and the love is overwhelming. Kind of like how if there's atheists and other or other religious people or whatever, but when we pray for them, they feel something not mental or physical, but spiritually opening up. Really, huh? Because I've had a lot of Christians tell me they'll pray for me, you know? They get annoyed about what I do and they do that passive aggressive, I'll pray for you thing. And yet I've never felt what you're talking about. Are you saying that these Christians never did go pray for me? Those sons of bitches. All right, well, let's you and me try it, okay? So what we'll do is we'll arrange a month, and within that month, you're going to pick five times, random times, random days, just whenever you want, five times, and you're going to pray for me. You're not going to tell me. You're not going to contact me. You're just going to pray for me. And then you're going to write down the date and time that it happened on. And meanwhile, I'll take a notebook, and if I feel something not mental and not physical, but spiritually opening up, I'll write down the date and time that it happened at, and then we'll compare notes, and they'll match up perfectly right? Or do you mean people only feel this thing when they're in the room with you and you can get them in on the big old church song and dance routine and the emotional speeches and the love bombing and then you say let's all pray for this atheist here in our church and you do a big old thing about how much you love that person and how much you want God to help that person and because they're the center of attention and of all this love from other people which people tend to like they go oh guys that's so nice thank you so much I feel so good good. This is so lovely. I, I've never felt like this before because people haven't done this weird shit around me before. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Because I'm pretty sure that notebooks idea, you know, an actual experiment, ain't gonna work. But spiritually opening up that hasn't been touched and it's so new to them. They're now new creations. They're brand spanking new. Some people who are susceptible to emotional manipulation may decide to convert to your religion. I agree. Try it on me. Try it on most people in my audience. We believe in God because we feel him. Yeah, see, I knew it had to be the most bottom of the barrel arguments here. It had to be fine tuning. And really, what's the only argument worse than that? I searched my feelings. I know it to be true. It wasn't exactly hard to predict that this was on the way. He communicates with his children. We pray he answers. He we talk, he talks back. 
Oh, come on. I said that part as a joke. I did not expect you to actually say it. And again, I start responding to a short video and I just can't find the end of it. So I guess this is part one. So I'll come back with more of this. Thank you very much for watching. Please, before you go, if you would, give the video a like and click subscribe. Thank you. Huge thanks to every single one of my supporters. If you want early access, sign up to my email list at list.logic.com. Also, I mirrored my whole channel to Odyssey and videos are going to be posted there as well from now on. There's an invite link for that in the description that gives me a little bit of funny money to use over there to boost my channel if you sign up through that. It's a really nice platform. I actually find that I want to be there. I've been watching some stuff on there. So check it out and see you next time.